Number 42, this figure here shows a cord attached to a cart that can slide along a frictionless horizontal rail aligned along an x-axis. The left end of the cord is pulled over a pulley of negligible mass and friction and a cord height h equals to 1.2 meters. So the cart slides from x1 to x2. During the move, the tension in the cord is a constant 25 newtons. What is the change in the kinetic energy of the cart during the move? So this problem looks really hard, but it's really easy. In fact, you just have to use the kinetic energy work theorem. So the change in the kinetic energy is equal to the work. So if we find the work, we have the change in the kinetic energy. So in principle, the work would be the integral of the dot product between the force and the movement, the displacement. However, in our case, so let me show you something here. Let's suppose that you're pulling with your hand here, right? You're pulling with your hand. So the force that you are applying is constant, right? So the force you're applying is constant and it's equal to 25 newtons. So if the force is constant, the work is just F dot product with delta X, right? So, or, or delta R. So you don't have to do, you, you don't have to integrate anymore. So that's already a simplification. But again, think a little bit more and you're pulling the cord straight, right? So you have only one dimension. So the work is simply F times delta X. So that's how you calculate the work, just F times delta X, because you can imagine from the point of view, view of someone pulling the cord, and it's much easier to analyze from that point of view. So if we can solve this equation over here, we have the change in the kinetic energy. F we already have, and it is 25 newtons. The only thing that we need is delta x. And my strategy here is to take this value, this length over here, let's call it delta x1, and this length when the cord is there, which is delta x2. So delta x will be equal to delta x1 minus delta x2. And that's it. We just have to find those two values and multiply by 25. And that's, that's, that's it. Okay, so let's make some right triangles over here. So let me erase everything here. So delta x1, we can see that we can use the Pythagorean theorem. So in order to find this, we know that delta x1 squared is equal to x1 squared plus h squared, right? Don't make any confusion between delta x1 and x1. That Probably delta x1 is it's not a good name, but well, you, you could change the letter if you want. So delta x1 is equal to the square root of x1 squared plus h squared and delta x2 let me erase this again delta x2 is just squared is just x2 squared plus h squared so delta x2 is equal to the square root of x2 squared plus h squared. So delta x is equal to the square root of x1 squared plus h squared minus the square root of x2 squared plus h squared. So we just have to multiply this by 25, replace the letters by the numbers, and that's it. So this is 25 times the square root of x1, which is 3 squared plus 
squared minus the square root of 1 squared plus 1.2 squared and this gives us roughly 1 sorry it gives us 41.7 joules and that's it not really difficult right